All right, hey everyone. So here I'm at Sosuko running some petiole sap tests. So I'm not gonna go over the protocol for running petiole sap tests, but the basic idea is that, and here's a pepper uh, leaf for example, is that you're taking some of the most recently matured leaves of a plant and harvesting the petioles off it. So you can see I've removed the petioles from these uh, peppers. So I've gotten most of the leaf material off and you can see the petiole is this little portion right here. It, it varies from plant to plant. For a tomato, the petiole is quite a bit longer than a pepper, um, and there's multiple leaflets. It's kind of a compound leaf. Uh, pepper, it's a little bit more of a simple leaf where you just, you know, you can't quite get the whole petiole. I can probably strip a little bit more of this out, but that's really just the petiole right there. So the idea is that you're harvesting about minimum three to four from a planting, a small planting of these most recently mature leaf petioles. And then I'm gonna take these and crush them in this garlic press right here. And then I'm gonna harvest that juice, the sap into this container. And then I'm actually gonna run that sap analysis on these ion electrode meters. So I have one for nitrate, nitrogen and potassium. So there are some levels, the University of Florida has some uh, good guidance on this. They don't necessarily give you the way with tissue analysis, you can get recommendations based on you know the full tissue, they, they actually analyze the entire leaf and then give you fertilizer recommendations based on that. The petiole sap is just kind of a general guideline. So they give you some ranges and it depends on the stage of growth uh, of the plant itself. So in this case with these peppers, I'm looking up the nitrate and potassium ranges at about the close to the first harvestable fruit range. And in this case for peppers, the nitrate levels should be somewhere between 800 and 1,000 part per million and potassium should be 2,400 to 3,000 part per million. So if the levels are, are less than that significantly, then I'm likely gonna get in there and, and fertilize. So I'm looking, it's about you know midway through their growth cycle, starting to harvest a little bit in the tunnels, uh, but I need to know if I need some supplemental uh, fertilization either through uh, drip irrigation through fertigation uh, via a fertigator like you see here or if I just go in there and, and uh, apply a soluble fertilizer uh, via by hand or maybe side dress something like a nitrogen and potassium fertilizer. So I need to do, do that check. So I'm going to run a quick example with peppers here. I've already done tomatoes and cucumbers and based on those levels, let's say tomatoes, for instance, it's a little confusing because there's varying recommendations for greenhouse tomatoes versus field tomatoes. And the high tunnels are kind of somewhere in between that. So I went with this broad range of 200 to 900 part per million where we're at uh, in the growth cycle, production cycle. And my levels for the petiole sap were 160. So they're, they're actually pretty low. So even though I'm getting some good growth in there, I'm actually gonna, this gives me a good indicator that I do need to actually do some supplemental nitrogen fertilization in there. The potassium levels are pretty close. 3,100 to 3,900 for the indeterminates and somewhere between four and 4,000 and 5,000 part per million, which 2,000 to 4,000 part per million is ideal at this stage. So I'm gonna actually add, I have this soluble soybean meal uh, fertilizer that's for drip. It's an organic nitrogen um, sort of drip irrigation, fertigation material. It actually also has some potassium in it. I've run some um, analysis on it. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of that um, supplement fertilizer in there. So just wanted to show you this process because this, if you have these selective ion electrodes, I'm, I'm actually doing a bunch of trials for saturated media extract testing of media and greenhouse soils. But you can also use this meter for testing things like petiole sap, uh, other um, fertilizer solutions you might be using. You know, these are pretty expensive. They're a few hundred dollars a piece, but I'm just kind of getting a feel for if these are useful tools for growers to have out in the field to help make nutrient management decisions and, and things of that nature. So uh, there is a process for this. I actually have it sketched out in my notebook, but I'm not going to go over it. There are some technical things you should pay attention to about, you know, kind of doing this at the same time of day, harvesting these most recently mature leaves, which are kind of towards the top of the plant, um, a certain amount, doing it at the same time of day. So yeah, so I've already kind of harvested these, got the petiole sap out. So I'm just gonna, you know, essentially kind of, I'll actually put this on the stand really quick to show you what this looks like. 
let's go ahead and focus this so right here all right so i have the petioles hopefully this is enough to get enough sap out of it so i'm just going to go ahead and put the petioles into the garlic press and i've already cleaned this out between the cucumbers and tomatoes and i'm just going to hopefully be able to get enough sap out of there so you can see i've gotten a little bit I don't know if that's going to be enough for both. I might have to go harvest some more. Sometimes you can take the saps out, reposition them, and then re-crush them to get a few more drops out. Yeah, this may be enough. I may be able to transfer this from the nitrate meter to the uh, to the potassium meter. So you want to? I think I got one, two, five, six, or seven leaves. I may need a little bit more. So with a larger field, you would definitely need, there's a larger representative sample you would get, but inside my small high tunnel, um, I'm just going to go with that. So I'm going to turn these back on. I've already calibrated them. All right, so maybe I can reposition this here so you can see what this looks like. All right, let me get this oriented properly. Move this up. All right, so these are both on. They're both being calibrated. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take the syringe that I've washed out. I've cleaned these out with distilled water between. So I'm just going to take some of the sap from the pepper, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on. So there's a, maybe enough for both at the same time. All right, so yeah, it looks like there was. So I've put uh, the nitrate... I'm sorry, the petiole sap on both, and let's just kind of zoom in and see here. So for the way these meters work is they get calibrated, and then when you put a sample in, once the smiley face comes on, that's the your reading that you're going to go for. All right, so for nitrate nitrogen, looks like 220 part per million, and then 1,300 part per million uh, for peppers. So I'm going to go ahead, write that down, and 1,300 part per million. So if you had enough, uh, you know, what I do with these samples, I'll dump it back in the vial, wash it out, dry it out, and retest it. But since I don't have that much, and this is just kind of an estimate, I'm just going to go um, with that. But between, if you're using one of these between uses, what you would do is come with some distilled or deionized water and rinse the, the sensor off. And then you can blot it dry with a a soft paper towel. Don't you don't want to scratch these electrodes, or you can kind of let it air dry, or use like a, you know, a little like a lens glass cleaner to kind of blot those sensors dry. Okay. So based on what I'm seeing here with 220 part per million, this is telling me I should be at 800 to 1,000 part per million. So that's pretty low. And it looks like the potassium levels are pretty low too, if I need to be at 2,400 to 3,000 part per million. Not too surprising, the high tunnel peppers are not in great shape. Uh, tremendous white fly and aphid pressure in that planting in there. So this isn't too surprising to see. Uh, so I'm actually, I should fertilize the entire tunnel really is what this is telling me. I have cucumbers, tomatoes, and peppers in there. They could all do with uh, a nitrogen boost uh, and maybe peppers with a little bit of uh, potassium too. So in terms of your options for that, I mean, any, you know, a lot of uh, high tunnel growers will use, you know, a nitrogen and potassium source like uh, potassium nitrate is a good example for conventional growers. This is a granulated uh, 909 nitrogen potassium. It's primarily... Um, Feather meal, blood meal, and sulfate of potash. So this is a more of an organic uh, granular fertilizer. I actually have a soluble soybean meal uh, that is, I think, a 1400. However, I have analyzed it with those electrodes, and it looks like there is some potassium in the soybean meal too. So I'm actually just going to apply that initially. I haven't hooked up my fertigator yet. Here's what my fertigator looks like. So just a small, simple fertigator. And the idea is I'd hook this into the distribution line for the drip irrigation. The problem is I don't have the proper connection, so I need to go get a one-inch 
adapter for this garden hose adapter. And you, you know, you put your fertilizer in there at the appropriate rate, and just like a dosatron, it's a small scale version of that. You can proportion it out at varying rates. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to go apply it by hand initially just to give them a little bit of a boost. So that's just a little demonstration of how I'm doing these petiole sap tests. Again, this isn't super accurate. There aren't necessarily, you can get some tables from the University of Florida that indicates what your, where your level should be, but there aren't necessarily recommendations that tell you if they are at this lower level, this is how much nitrogen or potassium you should add. I'm just going to go ahead and add probably the labeled rate on the, on the fertilizer. And then maybe I can, you know, in a couple of weeks or a week or two, I can reanalyze the petiole sap to see if I've, you know, boosted the nitrogen levels up to where they need to be. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that really quick as a, as a basic demonstration of how to do this petiole sap testing. You might notice I have this little bricks meter here. I'm going to use this for something different. I'm actually going to use this for the tomato fruit uh, to measure... A, the bricks content, which is an approximation of sugar content for, for tasting reasons, but also there is some correlation between bricks levels and fertility, which I'll dive into in a separate vlog or um, sort of fact sheet in the future. So, okay, we'll just go ahead and leave it there. Hope everyone's season is going well, and we'll uh, talk to everyone soon.